Hello folks. Last week somebody in the comments asked me if I could talk about the 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination. I don't think that's how she put it, but that's the name I learned it under. And I, I thought, oh, maybe this will be a good topic for this book I'm writing. And so over the weekend I sat down and I spent some time and I got my reference books out and I decided to try to write something about the 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination, and I failed utterly, <laughs> just miserably. Uh, I realized that I had addressed this before in my book Sit Down and Shut Up, which came out in 2007. I thought maybe I could say something that I didn't say in Sit Down and Shut Up, but when I looked at what I'd written and looked at what I'd written, I mean, this weekend, and then looked at what I wrote written what I wrote in 2007 and sit down and shut up it was pretty much the same thing so what's the point but it's one of those things that I think if you are gonna be you know running around telling your friends hi I'm into Buddhism then you ought to know what the 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination is whether you believe in it or can memorize it or rattle it off off the top of your head is a whole other matter but if you're gonna be you know running around saying hey I love Buddhism and I'm you know I'm, I'm a Buddhist and blah blah, blah you, you really should know the existence of this thing so <clears throat> handy dandy Shobogenzo volume 2 Dogen writes about a paragraph about the uh, 12-fold chain of uh, what's called dependent origination in this translation. Pratitya Samutpada. I love that name. It's one of those things that it stuck in my mind. You know, Tim McCarthy did that Zen class that I took in 1983 or whenever it was, and I still remember Pratitya Samutpada because I was like, oh, that's a pretty word. So let's read what Dogen says, and maybe we can kind of dig into it from there. Second, the vehicle of the Pratyeka Buddha, which is a self-enlightened person. And a Pratyeka Buddha is a slightly, whenever I come across it in Dogen or other literature in the Buddhist writings, it seems to be a slightly disparaging term. Like somebody who becomes enlightened just by themselves isn't as good as a Buddha, you know, who becomes enlightened with a teacher and then teaches it to others. A Pratyeka Buddha doesn't just becomes enlightened by herself or himself and then doesn't go on to teach it it's sort of a it's sort of just a dead-end buddha but they are enlightened so they're not you know completely you know useless creatures or anything like that so it's a slightly disparaging term uh, pratika buddha who attains parinirvana that's enlightenment through 12-fold dependent origination 12-fold dependent origination means and here we go with the 12 folds one, ignorance, two, action, three, consciousness, four, name and form, five, the six senses, six, contact, seven, feeling, eight, love, uh, sometimes desire, nine, taking, ten, coming into existence, eleven, birth, twelve, aging and death. While practicing these 12 causes, causing dependent origination to occur in the past, present, and future, we take causes one by one, and though not discussing a subject who reflects or an object that is reflected, we investigate them in practice, at which time they are turning the wheel of complete non-necessity. And turning the wheel of complete non-necessity is a kind of a pun by Dogen. Uh, it, the uh, wheel of Dharma is holding and he substitutes this word sofu yodin which sounds a little bit like holding but means complete non-necessity saying that uh, even the wheel of dharma may be a non-necessity dogen gets weird sorry about that uh, and they are causes as complete non-necessity. Remember, if ignorance is the one mind, then action, consciousness, and so on are also the one mind. If ignorance is cessation, then action, consciousness, and so on are also cessation. If ignorance is nirvana, then action, consciousness, and so on are also nirvana. Because appearance is also disappearance, we make such assertions as this. So appearance equals disappearance. To appear means that you're going to disappear. Everything that starts finishes. It's impermanence. Even ignorance is a word that speaks. Consciousness, name and form, and so on are also like this. And now here's where Dogen gets freaky. Remember, ignorance, action, and so on, the twelve folds of the chain are, I have an axe and would like to live with you on this mountain. Ignorance, action, consciousness, and so on are, when I set out, I received the master's permission, and now I would like to receive the axe. What the heck does that mean? 
It's a reference to a koan that is really hard to explain and really hard to understand, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to leave it at that. He's saying that it, it well, Nishijima Roshi's explanation says that these are the words of two masters, one of whom says uh, could not accept his teacher's uh, assertion that the manifestation of the balanced state by the two masters uh, was present and it seemed to be him to be too relaxed, but then he pursued the truth and after he pursued the truth he figured it all out and that's when he said I uh, wanted the master's permission and now I'd like to receive the axe. Just just leave it be, okay? The point of the 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination to me, the, the only thing I've ever gotten out of it is sort of like this. I grew up in the United States of America in the 20th and 21st centuries and the view of what a human being was that was inculcated into my brain as a child and still remains there as an adult is that I am a sort of meat machine that was developed over the course of billions of years, you know, if you go back to the earliest protozoas, through natural selection and survival of the fittest and that my thoughts are just the actions of material substances going around in my brain and mostly are based on survival and the pursuit of pleasure and uh, I'm limited in my existence. I started on March 5th, 1964. I'll end on whatever day I end and that'll be it, over and done with, and that's what I am. Of course, there are religious versions of what I am that I got, that I was an eternal spirit created by God who, you know, came on the earth to be tested uh, in order to see if he was able to go to heaven or had to be going, you know, go to hell because he'd done wrong instead of right. Um, those I couldn't believe. The scientific sort of materialistic version seemed more plausible to me, but it left a lot of things out. Then I came across this stuff, you know, this, uh, I wrote it all down for the sake of uh, putting it in the book and then didn't do it. But now those of you who want to see the Chinese characters can see at least my uh, poor renditions of the Chinese characters. So, so the idea here is the Buddhists have a completely different way of looking at what a human being is. This way of looking at what a human being is doesn't necessarily contradict the scientific version that I learned growing up as a as a Western person in, in America and, and so on. Uh, it, it slots it though into just uh, let's see the last three of the the chain. So it says that before so so what I'm saying is coming into existence birth and aging and death that's the part of it that the entire scientific understanding, materialistic understanding of life, the universe, and everything is is encompassed for the Buddhists in those three. And there's no reason for a Buddhist to fight against the scientific conception of, of what a human being is, you know, by building a museum in southern Ohio or northern Kentucky or wherever it is that shows that the dinosaurs really existed with Adam and Eve and di Tyrannosaurus were vegetarians and stuff. That's a real thing, by the way. Uh, but, but the Buddhists don't have a need to do that because they can, they can accept it as part of their philosophy. But then they have this whole other thing, nine other uh, things that have to happen before the material world even comes into existence. So, so this is where you get weird. This is uh, this is where the the Buddhists get funny. Uh, so ignorance appears first, and then action, then consciousness, then name and form, then the senses, then contact, feeling, love or desire, uh, taking, and then <laughs> the material body comes into existence and comes into existence, is coming into existence, and gets born, and then ages and dies, and then the whole thing starts over again. Now, Dogen takes this apart, and he, he pushes the envelope even further with this one, and says, yeah, okay, maybe all that's true, but every one of these links in the chain of 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination is also the same as every other link in the chain and they appear simultaneously uh, in in one sort of big whoomp, and uh, and that's the universe and the universe appears over and over and over again uh, continuously and time and space are are created by 
well, time and space don't even come into existence until, you know, the senses come into existence first to experience time and space, and it gets really weird. And it's very, very interesting stuff. But in a 10-minute video, or however long this video it turns out to be, I'm not going to be able to convince you of the truth of this, but I will say that working with Zazen and, and things like that, and, you know, kind of having had the experiences around Zazen that I've had, uh, this makes sense to me, <laughs> you know, and uh, again, if, if you haven't done the practice or if you've only just started in the practice, it'll probably not make any sense at all to you and it'll probably sound, sound like speculation, but if, if you kind of go deeply, deeply into it, ideas like these make sense. The other thing is, this is just an idea. This is just a formula that certain ancient Buddhists used to try to express something which is beyond the formula. So there's no need to sit there and memorize what are the 12 chains in the codependent co-origination unless, you know, you want to impress your friends with that. I don't know what kind of friends you got that would be impressed by that, but maybe somebody would. I don't know. So... There isn't a reason that I, I feel like I have to memorize it. I, I kind of, every time I need to know about it, I, I know where to look in Dogen and, or, or online and I can find it. And it's interesting and useful. But as I said at the beginning of the video, you ought to know if you're going to be a Buddhist what this is. One of the, my sort of pet peeves around Buddhism and, and people who say they're Buddhists is you often get people who are like, I'm a Buddhist, and they, they, they don't even know the very basics of, of Buddhist philosophy or anything. They wouldn't know a 12-fold chain of codependent co-origination if it hit them on the head. So, you know, here I am giving it to you folks, and if you want to go and look it up more, I'm sure there's plenty of resources online and in books that you can find more information about it if you want. To me, it's just a different way of looking at reality that places the version of reality, the version of what I am, in a context. The version of what I am that I grew up with learning, the materialistic version, gets put into a context and has all these other things that come along before it even happens and, and don't interfere with it necessarily. You can have evolution, you can have uh, cause and effect, uh, billions of years of, of natural selection and all that other stuff. It still, still works out. You can still say, yeah, yeah, all that happened, but then there's this whole other thing that, that also goes along with it and the material universe exists kind of inside, nestled within something much, much bigger. That's kind of the Buddhist idea, or at least it's the best I can do on a Monday morning trying to explain it on a video. Uh, so there you go. If you want to contribute to me making more of these videos, here's the link below me, uh, and uh, it should show up on my chest somewhere around the aliens. I really, really appreciate the donations you've been making, and it is the way I have been able to keep going uh, and, uh, and and make a living, and it's it's much better than, than book royalties or anything else I get, so I really, really appreciate that. But as always, if you're strapped and have financial troubles and you need to drop out, uh, I understand, and that's cool, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll all be okay, I think, but those of you who are contributing. I thank you very much. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye.